क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम ईकीडा Hello friends in today's session we are going to compare between the two of the most important processes to convert permanent hard water into soft water and those are ion exchange process and zeolite process now what exactly is permanent hard water hard water can be classified into two types temporary hard water and permanent hard water permanent hard water is that hard water which cannot be easily converted into soft water by mere boiling or any other physical means like filtration to convert permanent hard water into soft water we need chemical treatments and those chemical treatments are ion exchange process and zeolite process we have studied both these processes but in this session we are going to study the difference between them and compare both of them ion exchange process and zeolite process first let us understand what ion exchange processes and zeolite processes ion exchange as the name says it will exchange ions not all ions present in water contribute to the hardness of water there are certain impurities which are still present in water but still the water is soft for example nacl in water sodium chloride in water when i have on my normal salt or common salt added to water that nacl will dissociate forming na plus ions and cl minus ions these ions though they are present in water will not make that water into hard water but there are certain other impurities like cacl2 mgcl2 caso4 mgso4 so when my cacl2 dissociates it will form ca2 plus and 2 cl1 minus ions similarly for mgcl2 it will form 2 mg plus and 2 cl minus ions and those ions will contribute to the hardness of water so in ion exchange process we have beds the cationic bed the anionic bed what is cationic bed the positive ion bed the anionic bed is the negative ion bed and they will exchange their own ions which are those ions which will not contribute to the hardness of water and they will in exchange take away all the impurities which actually contribute to the hardness of water that is the main process of ion exchange the next is zeolite process now zeolite itself is a certain kind of chemical which is made up of many elements clubbed in or fused in together when this zeolite is added to water the zeolite will mix with other impurities in the water try reacting with them and form certain products and these products will be insoluble in water which we can easily precipitate or filter out this is the main logic of the zeolite process now let us compare both the processes in detail over here this process can produce softened water with residual hardness of 0 to 2 ppm that means after the entire ion exchange process is done after the water passing through the cationic bed the anionic bed and after that ion exchange process also has a gas chamber that chamber will do one thing it will take away all the dissolved gases present in water which are not needed in water and which contribute to the hardness of water for example gases like co2 carbon dioxide h2s all of these gases which are present in water are in a dissolved form there's a gas chamber which will remove all these gases as well once the cations anions and gases are removed after that whatever product we get is my soft water and this soft water will have impurities from 0 to 2 ppm ppm is parts per million that means for million parts of water or million molecules of water there will be 0 or 2 parts of the impurities for the zeolite process this process can produce softened water with residual hardness ranging between 0 to 15 ppm over here we had 0 to 2 ppm over here we having 0 to 15 ppm that means for this one for million parts of water i will have 15 parts of the impurities that means for million molecules of water i will have from 0 to 15 molecules of impurities when we compare both of them my ion exchange process is giving me 0 to 2 ppm the zeolite process is giving me 0 to 15 ppm 
that means the ion exchange process is producing better yields as compared to the zeolite process. The next point over here says that the resultant water is suitable for all types of boilers, especially high pressure boilers. Now what exactly are boilers? Boilers are those big machines which will actually boil water. And if there are impurities present in water, then those impurities can get stuck to all the walls of the boiler. Since my ion exchange process, the product that I get, that means the softened water that I get after the ion exchange process, has only 0 to 2 ppm of impurities, the water, this soft water, which is also known as the resultant water, that means the resultant water or the softened water can be used for any kind of boilers and high pressure boilers as well. Whereas for a zeolite process, the resultant water is not suitable for use in high pressure boilers. Water can be used only in low or medium pressure boilers because of the amount or the percentage of impurities present in it, which is 0 to 15 ppm. The third point states that the cation and anion exchange, cation is nothing but positive ion, anion is nothing but negative ions. Now we have beds for exchanging the positive ions and negative ions. So we have cation exchange bed and anion exchange bed. Used are more expensive, hence capital cost is high. Because over here we are using entire beds, the cationic bed, the anionic bed and the gas chamber bed. Over here zeolite softener is comparatively cheap and hence capital cost is lower. The fourth point over here says, the softening plant is not compact, hence occupies more space. Because we have three big chambers over here, the cationic chamber, the anionic chamber and the gas chamber. And that is the reason why we cannot have a compact version of it. But for the zeolite process, the softening plant is compact and hence it occupies less space. Because we just have to take the water sample and to it we just have to add our chemicals. Point number five is, the process effectively removes all the hardness causing substances. It can also remove alkali metals like Na or K. Na standing for sodium, K standing for potassium, chlorides and sulfates. Na chloride is NaCl, potassium chloride is KCl, NaSO4, K2SO4 and all of that. That means sulfates of sodium and potassium and chlorides of sodium and potassium are also removed by the ion exchange process, which does not happen in the zeolite process. In zeolite process, it will only remove Ca2+, Mg2+, Fe2+, Mn2+. So Ca2 plus can give me CaCl2, CaSO4. Mg2 plus can give me MgCl2, MgSO4. Fe2 plus can give me many products. It can give me chlorides, sulfates, oxides, etc. And similar is with Mn2 plus. Hence, often water contains certain salts like NaCl, NaHCO3, Na2SO4, etc. in the dissolved form. This is the reason why there is more percentage of impurities in the zeolite process as compared to the ion exchange process. Ion exchange process not only removes all the impurities causing hardness of water, but also removes certain impurities which do not even contribute to the hardness of water. Ion exchange process focuses on removing all kinds of impurities, whereas zeolite process focuses on removing all the impurities which contribute to the hardness of water. And that is why there is a difference of 0 to 2 ppm in the ion exchange process and 0 to 15 ppm in the zeolite process. Point number 6 says, this process is useful for acidic as well as alkaline water. Now what do we mean by acidic and alkaline water? We have a pH scale which is from 0 to 14 and pure water is always neutral. So it comes at 7. From 0 to 7, it is acidic. From 7 to 14, it is basic, also known as alkaline. Now, depending on what kind of impurities present in the water, our pure water, which has to be at 7, can go into the acidic form or can go into the basic form. If there are basic impurities present in water, for example, NH4Cl salts, ammonia, etc., then the water will become basic. 
But if there are acidic impurities present in water, for example, H2SO4, oxides of calcium or something, then the water can become acidic. So if I have acidic water, that is water in the range of 0 to 7, or I have basic water, water in the range of 7 to 14, both of these waters can be cured or can be turned into soft water with the help of ion exchange process. For zeolite process, it is not useful for highly acidic water as acid affects zeolite bed. Now what is zeolite bed? Zeolite bed is the zeolite or the permutite which we actually add into the water. This zeolite is added into the water so it will react with other impurities present in the water and because of that reaction it will form certain precipitates. These precipitates will be later removed from the water. But if the water is highly acidic, that means if water comes in the range of 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. in this range, then zeolite process cannot be used for it. Because zeolite will give certain other reactions or other type of reactions with highly acidic substances and zeolite will not retain its own properties there, which will try to contaminate the water or impure the water more because zeolites get dissolved in high acids. The next point says soft water obtained does not cause caustic embrittlement in the boilers and is suitable for boilers as it is free from Na plus ions. What do we mean by caustic embrittlement? The soft water may contain certain amount of impurities. Now this soft water containing certain amount of impurities is added to the boilers. When this soft water is added to the boilers, the boilers will start boiling the water. What stays behind are the impurities. These impurities get stuck to the walls of the boiler. This is known as scaling and sludging. Scales are formed if the impurities get stuck to the boilers for many days and they become hard. Sludges are formed when impurities get stuck to the water but they are not hard, they are slushy. Now these scales and sludges lead to caustic embrittlement of the boilers. But that does not happen a lot with the soft water obtained from the ion exchange bed. When it comes to the zeolite process, the soft water obtained is not suitable for boilers because it contains NaHCO3 and NaOH and both of these cause caustic embrittlement. Both of these will stay on the walls of the boilers, degrading the qualities of the boilers. So in today's session, we tried comparing the ion exchange process and the zeolite process. Both of these are very important processes when it comes to softening of hard water. We saw which is better than the other in terms of purification of water. We also compared the soft waters of both of them and the capital costs as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.